Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from lovely sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Eric Reed, who's in Cincinnati, Ohio. How are you doing, Eric? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And Eric is the founder and CEO of the Read 5 group and also a podcaster as well. You have the um, Rethink Marketing podcast. And today it's an interesting subject that we're going to talk about because there's a lot of people who who listen into these podcasts and who subscribe to, to Sales Pop and who we communicate with who are sales managers or sales leaders. And Eric has an interesting position here where he says, the sales manager is an antiquated position. So Eric, for all those people who are out there going, oh, I don't know my job was antiquated. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I, I think just because the position's antiquated doesn't mean it can't be updated and uh, evolve a little bit. So I, I think when I say, I know when I say that, what I'm referring to is we seem to march in the same line, follow the same rules, um, and we don't really rethink it as much as we should. And with the world we're living in right now, with all the challenges that we're all faced with, I mean, now's the perfect time to, to do that because it's managing remotely, et cetera. So at the risk, uh, I apologize to anybody offended. So, uh, you know, I've been told I've been uh, antiquated from time to time. So you make some changes, you know, so that's what I mean. You've got to rethink what it looks like and what it means to be an effective leader. And I think, that, and I think part of the, the issue maybe here too, Eric, is uh, to some degree, the sales manager role isn't that well defined anyway to begin with. Uh, I think you'd find it says managers uh, in different organizations operate in different ways. There are different things that are important to some than others because w we've never really sort of said, here's what an effect, or a lot of people have never said, here's what an effective sales manager really looks like. I think you're right. I, I think, uh, you know, we, you hear things all the time. Um, you hear things all the time, you know, am I a coach? Am I a leader? Am mm -hmm. I, I mean, we, we get these uh, we get these thoughts of what an effective sales leader is and, and where's that coming from? There's not like a, I mean, if you read a, a definition of what it is, it might say, oh, have your meetings start on time and right. you know, empower people, et cetera. But it's, it's one of those weird things that we don't bring enough of, I don't think we bring enough, we don't bring enough of our own personality to the table. We tend to think, well, this is how you have to do it and this is how you have to do it. And I think that's where you run into trouble. Yeah, and I think, and obviously, you know, a lot of sales leaders or sales managers come out of being effect, you know, being uh, talented or you know, mm -hmm. achievement and performance based uh, sales reps, and then they get promoted into the position, or some might say demoted into the yeah. position um, of of sales manager. And again, and I think at that stage, then sometimes they think, well, the role is really uh, just drive the team and then report the metrics. Yeah, I, I think, you know, drive the team, report the metrics, have everybody, you know, follow the CRM, you know, have your weekly meetings and report back. I mean, at a certain point, you just become an observer. This is the danger. You become an observer of what's going on as opposed to a leader of where you want to take people. I, I, I say something, um, you know, I've said many times before, and it, it, it'd probably be offense. It, it, that won't be offensive, but it would be something that would, would say to me that, um, you know, I might take exception to, and that is, you know, when you have great sales success with a great team, um, sometimes it's just the right spot, the right situation and so forth. And so you really have to go back and say, you know, what, what was my contribution to that? doesn't mean you didn't have any, but you really got to understand it. Cause I see far too often where people think, well, I did it great here. I want to get a promotion. I'm going to go someplace else and do it. And Holy smokes, they didn't really learn anything and things crumble all around them and they don't know what's going on. I think yeah. it's a danger. That's all I'm saying. No, no, I, I agree. And I also think that a lot of people are unconsciously competent. You know, they, they, they may be good, but they don't know why they're good. So it's not actually repeatable or replicable because they don't actually can't identify what it is they do. So what would you say as the role of sales, sales manager, sales leader needs to evolve? What are some ways that you think it needs to evolve? Well, I think, I, I think that one of the ways is, I think that we have to embrace the fact that we're we're not just responsible for this group or this team to you know 
be accountable for every action that they take. So, I mean, I've, throughout the career, I've led some teams, I've been managed by uh, leaders. Some are very suffocating. Uh, some are very control minded. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that the sales manager of the, you know, I'll, I won't go back to seven seventies and eighties. I'll go back to just, you know, the early two thousands. Um, I think we really have to embrace people for what they're capable of achieving and let them become uh, a valued asset on the team. I, I, where I see things very often is this, is that we get this mindset that we've got to have five of this person to be a great sales team. The reality is nobody's the same. And I know that sounds cliche and, and basic, but he, here's why most sales managers fail is because they believe it's cliche and basic and they're not consistent with it. Being a successful sales leader is an easy task. Uh, it's difficult to be consistent with it, but if you're consistent, you get the results you're looking for. So I just think you need to, I, I just think you need to step away, uh, not for management, but you really need to let your people develop, find out what they want to become, not be afraid to see them succeed, uh, and just nurture them on that journey. And that and might think, sound lovey, but I think that's a powerful thing, to be honest with you. I know I don't think it sounds that way at all. And I think it's a it's an important uh, it's an important uh, insight in in terms of I also think that we spend a lot of time trying to fix people instead mm -hmm. of trying to uh, focus on what they're good at and give them more. And I think this happens a lot in, in, in sales, even as way we say, oh, the great door opener, great at starting the process, but they're not yeah. very good at closing. So let's work on their closing skills yeah. right. instead of saying, well, actually look at Eric, he's a great closer. He's not so great at opening doors or whatever. So why don't we just le leverage the skills of both of them and then we get like one and one makes three instead of yeah. one and a half. Well, that's a powerful statement. I'm glad that you said that. I, I just recently had that exact same conversation. There was, uh, I didn't create this system, but there was a system mm -hmm. called STP. It was in uh, Media News Group, which was a big media company in the, in the States back in the day. And they created, there was a, a gentleman who, their sales were stagnant. The, the onslaught of the internet was coming. They had to figure out how to convert over to digital. And so we, they, they implemented this system called the STP. I either roll this out to our regional team. And it did exactly what you said it did. It looked at everybody. If, if, if just to use the number, if the goal was a hundred thousand that the team had to write and you had five mm -hmm. reps, well on paper, that's easy, right? 20,000 per rep sure. were there. What, what, what this system really did is it looked at the call. It looked at everybody through the same lens, no favor. Everybody was being judged, but the same. And just because you made more cold calls than this person, that didn't mean anything because their closing percentage could have been higher. They may have yeah. been better at prospecting. So I think uh, to go back to what you asked, I think you have to, un you need to learn what the skill set is and you need to embrace that. You need to cherish it. You need to, uh, you know, pat the person on the back for being good at that. Don't try to make them into this perfect sales machine, understand what their skill sets are and leverage that because you'll have somebody else who's better at the reciprocal. Yeah, no, I ab absolutely. I and a hundred percent. And I think, yeah, it might be a bit of a pain to, to work out how to team and how to do that, whatever. It's a lot simpler if you just have a bunch of individuals going at it, but it's, it's much more, it's much more effective. And I think something else you touched on there earlier is, yeah, we're in a different world now where uh, a lot of sales is being done virtual. I mean, some people, we, we've been doing it for a long time ourselves, actually working, running a largely virtual organization, you know, out of strategy a while back rather than necessity but a lot of people are doing it out of necessity now and i think that's another skill set and it, it's interesting also that the people who are great at working a room or exploding into an organ into a building and lighting up the place are not always as effective when they're in as when they're confined by zoom and some of the people maybe who are a little bit more reticent are actually better in that environment so again i think you've got to look at this the skills needed yeah, I, I, it's a good point. I, I, you know, I don't. I try not to make a habit of bringing Bill Murray into something. I don't know the man at all, but you know, there, there's a guy who's, uh, who, who knows how to work a room. And so, if you were to put him on a Zoom camera, the, the challenge is you're not your own prop anymore, and mm -hmm. can't be as captivating as engaging. That is an interesting challenge. I, it'll be interesting to me to see the kind of data and the uh, articles and the and the and the news like lookbacks to the last yeah. year to kind of understand it. Um, because I think that's a, a major thing. If you're a relationship seller and it's all about, you know, the physical contact and the, and the laughs and just that kind of stuff, this is going to be a difficult market. I actually think it will make us better salespeople. 
No, and I, I would intend to agree with you. And I think that the biggest mistake a lot of people can make right now is kind of holding on for dear life, thinking, yeah. okay, when this is over, I'll be getting back on the plane. I'll be jumping in my car, I'll be going out. <laughs> right. hey, probably not going to happen because companies are already seeing the, uh, seeing the cost savings, the productivity savings in not doing that. And if they've managed to navigate this crisis and sales haven't like fallen, you know, cratered, yeah, and they're going to be very reluctant to invest in uh, invest all that money when they see, yeah, we can probably do this differently. Yeah, it happens, right? I mean, we had the the economic impact in two thousand eight and so forth. Mm -hmm. I was in Detroit at the time, and the you know the automotive industries, etc. And you, you know, businesses survive. They find ways to uh, realize, you know, survive with those efficiencies. And so when things go back to normal, they're not in a real big hurry to go back and increase the bottom line again of expense. They've kind of figured out a way to to work their way through it, and then they're just going to keep going like that. Yeah, and I, and I think that will happen. Yeah, and I think then to your point, then I think that's where the role of the sales manager is going to become increasingly critical. I think that if you're going to be an effective sales manager, you should really be looking at how do you how do you um, understand and take on board the best of what's been happening and all the best part and equip your people for maybe this is the way they're going to be doing it going forward. So be a little bit more proactive and progressive. Right. Yeah, I, I will say that I'm a big culture person. I, I do. Mm -hmm. You know, when I when I think about sales, when I talk about sales, um, I really am a people and culture person. And I think, you know, there's people who aren't don't have good work ethics. There's people who aren't good fit for your culture. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anybody really wakes up in the morning and says, I want to have a terrible day. I want to not follow the rules. I, I don't I want to mm -hmm. go in and not pretend like I don't care about working for the company and having a successful sales day. There's something between the walking from their car or now signing on to a meeting and getting in, there's something that's happening. And so if you have a good salesperson who was good and then is going bad, you know, if that's to put it as simple as that, I think nine out of 10 times, the answer is somewhere in something that's going on in that culture. Um, and, and maybe that's okay. As a company, we, we have our vision, we know who we are and people just don't always fit. Um, but it always struck me as odd that it was the best salesperson, you know, last year and now mm -hmm. they're not worth anything because they're not hitting last year's numbers. There might, there's got to be something going on because you don't just lose that skill. Yeah. And I think that gets back to what you said about uh, the this, this sales manager. I mean, this is the time then for the sales manager to be really reaching out and understanding what's going on with the individual members of the team. Because to your point, Eric, who knows, maybe their home situation isn't ideal for being stuck at home remotely selling. Maybe there's a load, maybe they just feel uncomfortable. I mean, I've come across people who are fantastic, as we said earlier, fantastic in rooms, networking events, but get but you put on a webcam they suddenly like are like deer in the headlights right so maybe there's a lot of things that if the, the, the sales manager can really get behind what's going on they can probably do a lot of great work and actually you know prove themselves as a great leader at this time yeah and i do think that the time we're in you know i, I do think this is an upside for sales in general i, I mean uh you know the you know business survives business thrives new emerging types of businesses come up um, the need for still understanding client needs and mm -hmm. making uh, evaluation and, and keep putting value behind it exists. And so, um, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges is on the sales manager. We did an episode on the podcast about managing remotely. And, and, and one of the things that we read in the study was um, just the alienation that people are feeling at home. Mm -hmm. And, and then there was also something about, uh, and this would be a, something to a sales manager to be aware of, you know, your people are working at home. They're, they're, they're spending a lot. They're, it's hard to disconnect at home because you're always yeah. connected. You're there. Mm -hmm. And so I would ask the one thing I would say, you didn't really ask this, but I would say this. I think the one piece of advice that I would give a sales manager who's managing remotely in these times right now is to be aware of the time that when you send out an email, because sometimes employees might feel like they always got to respond to their managers. So if you send out an email at eight or nine o'clock on a Thursday night, that's not really fair because you're not really probably expecting an answer at that moment, but the person who receives it doesn't know if you're expecting an answer or not or no. So I just think be aware of some of the isolation and some of the mental uh, psychological things that are going on right now. Yeah, I think that's a very powerful point. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, I think it's, it's not out of malice, but as you said, just out of not thinking things through right. about the fact that, yeah, 
circumstances may have changed and people also may be a obviously a little more worried about their jobs as naturally enough so therefore they feel obligated or they want to jump on it immediately and whatever and you don't know what havoc that's creating in their environment yeah absolutely absolutely yeah and and i think i think so you know getting back to where we started and like the role being antiquated i certainly think as a as a you know just driving and metrics uh, it's it's antiquated i definitely think that now is the time for sales managers or sales leaders really you mentioned culture really driving culture but also really understanding the individuals on their team and making the circumstance and the environment to get the best out of each individual yeah i i agree I, and i i'm a i do think one of the most important things too is and, and again this is one of those basic things that we all know who've led sales teams or organizations that consistency is powerful and it's a very powerful a simple thing but very powerful mm -hmm. in its uh, essence that you know the meetings now are more important than ever because i think people are worried about their jobs not just if i'm doing a good job but is my company able to navigate through these tough times i could be selling like crazy but maybe the company's struggling and so those weekly meetings uh, with your sales team realizing that that's the you know it's not about you it's about that direct report that's their one you might have 20 meetings a week but that's the one meeting per week that they're really looking forward to to get an ear of their direct supervisor and just talk a little business and shop and and feel good and get motivated for the next week of work yeah and, and i'm glad you brought that one up too because i think that's incredibly important because people take their cues from things like that so if you set an in, if you set a weekly meeting with me but you, know, you cancel it you know, one out of three times or you cut it short or, you know, there's nothing, you you don't really have anything to talk about. For me, that just immediately communicates, okay, well, I'm not valued here. I'm, yeah. you know, the writing's on the wall for me. Conversely, if you were to make that meeting and it's, it's a valuable meeting, you put some thought and effort into it, I feel like a valued member. I feel like that it's, you know, then I want to run through brick walls, right? Yeah. Yeah, work, relationship, life, we all just want to, you know, you want to, when you speak, you want to be heard, you want to feel valued. So, um, and maybe in there is somewhere, is a lesson somewhere in there is that, you know, it doesn't just, it doesn't matter that the environment is work, sales, and business. It's a human to human relationship mm -hmm. and to understand in these times more than ever, what makes humans tick and feel valued. That's going to go a lot further than, uh, hey, did you make your 10 calls this week? Yeah, and, and the other part too is uh, just that, that ongoing communication because I think people forget sometimes that maybe you were in an office at one stage or uh, and maybe as a manager, maybe you used to just swing by and hang over the cubicle and have a quick chat with somebody or whatever or at the, in the kitchen or that and you're not doing that. You got to fill that in somehow and make yeah. sure that that just all doesn't disappear. But you have those random moments of communication that makes the other person feel like, oh, they, they thought about me. Yeah, you know, I've thought about recently, because we're talking a lot, and rightfully so, about that sales rep to the manager, because we're looking at it from a sales manager down. Mm -hmm. But you just made, said something that made me think about something that, that, that I, you know, there's a management style that a lot of, particularly, particularly in media, there's a management style of just taking the temperature, walking the floor, mm -hmm. that's your day, making sure, you know, being, can I help you with anything, et cetera. Well, how do you do that in a virtual yeah. world? You know, and so the answer is it can be done. Um, we just got to figure it out with the technology, but it's, it's the value that it gave to both manager and direct report still exists. And if it was important, then it should be equally as important now. Yeah, no, and I 100% agree because back when I ran companies, uh, <clears throat> that's exactly what I would do constantly is walk the floor for temperature and all of that kind of stuff. And you're right, as you can do it now, you just need to be a little bit more deliberate about it. You need to leverage the technology, but it, it, it can be done. And, and I think it's an incredibly important thing to do because I guarantee you there's a lot of people out there feeling very, very dislocated. No, I think you're right. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, uh, Eric, this has been great. Uh, we're bumping up against the end of our time. Um, I know it's flown by. Um, if uh, all of Eric's information would be below this video, but before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, what I do, I, you know, I, I am a podcast host. We challenge people to rethink 
sales and marketing, uh, and whether it's sales and marketing or life in general, I just think there's some power in rethinking, you know, just because it's the way it's always been done doesn't mean that's the way you should get locked in. It's a little bit what we've been talking about here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the Read 5 group is about, we, we work with companies uh, to, uh, we really work with small to mid-sized businesses who does, they might be in a good spot with their business, but they're really trying to get their leadership team on the same page because it all funnels down from there. So what we say is we provide a, a, you know, clarity, simplification, and we help companies achieve their goals. Uh, it's a real fancy way of saying that if you've got a company and a business model you believe in, sometimes it's easier uh, to reach out and have an outsider who's not emotionally connected to the company uh, to help you push some things along. So um, we believe in people and the power of people in the sales and marketing world. Yeah, no, it's great. And I would encourage people to check it out. Uh, I agree with you 100% is that sometimes you're just too close to things, having a dispassionate third party whose only objective is to help you, um, yeah. I think is a very, very valuable thing. Sure. All right. Well, listen, thanks, Eric. My name is John Golden, Says Pop Online, Says Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.